Hey there, in this video we are going to look at the basic absolute value function y equals absolute value of x. We are going to look at this function three different ways numerically, graphically, and algebraically or in other words using tables, graphs, and equations. All right, so looking at the basic absolute value function, or in other words, y equals absolute value of x. Now we're gonna look at it in comparison to just y equals x. So we're gonna compare and think about what happens when you take this x and now make it absolute value of x. In other words, when you transform that x into absolute value of x. So to start with here, we'll make a table and a graph. So we'll look at this numerically and graphically for the original that we already have seen before y equals x and the and the new thing here y equals absolute value of x so if we're going to fill out a table first for y equals x that's a pretty easy table to fill out because the y values are the same as the x values so if those are your x values then your y values are all exactly the same and we can fill that down like that and i'm sure you've seen this graph before this graph is all these points along here where the y and the x value are the same. Now I have integer values there, but of course you could join the points because you could pick any number for x there. The domain is all real numbers, so that's what the graph looks like. That diagonal straight line like that. Now if we're going to do a table and a graph for that function, the y equals absolute value of x, some of these points that we had originally are going to be the same and namely those ones are going to be when you have these positive values or zero they're going to stay the same because if you put a three in there absolute value of three is still three absolute value of two is still two absolute value of one is one absolute value of zero is zero so these points down here don't change when we make that transformation from y equals x to y equals absolute value of x. However, when we're using these x values, if I put negative 1 in there, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So those points, these points right here, become these points. They're different in these two graphs. The difference is there, these ones had negative y values, these ones now have positive y values for the same x values. All right, so let's look at what the graph of that looks like then. So the part that's the same, I'll draw that first. Those are just those same points up here. Now, just like before, I'm gonna join them because they could be any values in there, not just the integer values. So that's the part that didn't change this part this part right that's that part of the graph that didn't change the part of the graph that is going to change are those other values there so these values if i'm graphing those negative three three negative three three is right there negative two two is right there negative one one is there negative four four would have been on there so if i'm drawing this part of the graph it's actually up there all right now where it would have been in the original i'll just draw it on here this would have been this down here right that part that used to be down there is now not down there anymore it's actually up above here so this part that was down below has gone up here now these points okay those points that are highlighted in blue there those ones are in a different place now on the graph you can think about it that this part of the graph down below here has actually been reflected up above here because that's what's actually happened. These negative y values, that's the difference here. They've become positive. And so this part that's below where the y values are negative has been reflected up above where those values are positive. For the same x values, you get different y values. So you see a change in the graph. All right, so that V-shaped graph there, this V-shaped graph, that's what the function Y equals absolute value of X looks like. Now let's write down some similarities and differences down below here. 
The x values, as we said, how are they the same? The x values are the same for both of those tables, right? You could pick any x value for either one. So the domain is the same. Okay, they're both all real numbers, but the range is different. Okay, the range changes. The range changes from, well, you have it, all real numbers here for the range in the original. The range is now just y being greater than or equal to zero. These are always positive or zero. You're not gonna have negative numbers there because you're taking the absolute value. You can think about this original one as one single piece, one straight line, whereas this one is actually two parts now. There's two pieces to it. There's now two pieces, if you will, to the graph. All right? Now, as we said before, how could you transform this original graph to get this one? To think of it as a transformation, it's going to transform part of the graph. And the part of the graph that it transforms is that part that has negative y values. All the parts of the graph that have negative y values have been reflected up above here, right? Any point that had a negative y value has been reflected above. So any y values that were negative become positive. Now, the fact that that has two pieces to it, we can express that algebraically with something that's called a piecewise function. To write this as a piecewise function, I'll give myself a bit more space there. So we're gonna say the absolute value of x. We're gonna describe each of those two branches of that graph without using these absolute value brackets here. So we're just gonna describe each straight line part of that using a linear equation. So we have two parts. We have the part where you started with x values that were greater than or equal to zero, because that's where the, the split is if we look back at the graph. You have this part of the graph that is where it stayed the same, and you have this part of the graph where it got reflected up above. So we have the part where you have x is greater than, and we'll include zero on that side, and you have the part where x is less than zero. So those are our two parts, and the first part, where x is greater than or equal to zero, it didn't change at all, so absolute value of x is just x. The part that did change was we had to switch those values. Whatever we had, we had the opposite of that, and the way you do that with a variable is you put a negative sign in front, and that was when x was less than zero. This is a piecewise function because it involves two pieces. There's this piece that didn't change. This was the right side of the graph. It stays the same. And this was the left side that was reflected or opposite, opposite sign. All right, so that's an algebraic representation of that absolute value function and up above here you have a graphical representation of that absolute value function and you also have this table a numerical representation of it all of the all those three representations show the same thing anywhere where you would have otherwise had negative values they all become positive whether it's on the graph reflecting in the table of switching signs or in our algebraic expression here where we switch the signs of anything that would have been negative, all right? So that's a look at that basic absolute value function.